today I've got some rustic fall decor using magnolias. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a card tag. I'm going to start off with some plaster chalk paint and a brush, some ribbons from Dollar Tree. This is some trim that I have and you can get some at Dollar Tree. A thrifted tag and this is like an MDF I think and a beautiful card that I got at the thrift store. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to take the hanger off of my tag. I started off by attempting to peel off the paper here. It's kind of messy. Now I'm going to take my card apart. Now you can just cut this if you want, but I learned this trick a long time ago when I was a kid. So you just turn your card inside out, squeeze your fingernails on it, make a tight line with your fingernails, flip it over, do the same thing again, and then when you lay it down, you can just easily pull it off. I love this beautiful picture. All right, so I'm going to take that chalk paint and cover up my little tag here. Give it a nice clean blank slate. And this will be the back of our tag. We want it to look good on the back too, so this is how it's gonna be. So now, since we don't have to be painting, we're just gonna be covering up. It doesn't really matter what the front looks like, right? So I'm just going to flip it over and use my little craft knife on my um, mat and then cut it off. And I like to just rotate this around, that way I don't lose my placement and I can just keep on working. Okay, and this part does not have to be perfect. So I'm gonna use my Mod Podge here and a sponge brush. And since that card stock is thick, I'm gonna use quite a bit of this Mod Podge. And we're gonna use it like a glue. Now, you can use a glue stick if you would like. Or you could definitely use like a school glue if you would like. You know, it's back to school time, so everybody is taking advantage of the good deals on school supplies, so it would be a good time to use some school glue here if you have it. Just gonna give it a good coat all the way up to where the top of the card is going to be. And it's tacky now, I tested it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down on the tag. So now we have a nice clean front and a nice clean back. I'm gonna press this down with my hands first. I like to hold it in place so it doesn't slide off. And then I'm just gonna use this little tool here. You can use a credit card or any flat edge. You can use your ruler if you want and smooth it out. I'm gonna add some Mod Podge over the top here. And then I'm gonna go all the way over the card with it. It doesn't take a lot here. I'm just using what's left in the brush because I want it to have the same finish from the top to the bottom. Make it look a little bit more like one piece. And then I'll give that some time to dry. And you can use a heat tool here if you would like to dry it. Now, just to make those edges look a little bit rougher because we love rustic on this channel, I'm just gonna use my sanding block because my paper was shredded there. And go all the way around the edges. The idea here is to make those edges look like they are part of the sign and to make them appear as though this is painted on rather than a card stuck on a tag. So you're gonna continue around just like this. If you don't wanna do it this way, you certainly don't have to. Say you don't have a sanding block, you don't have to do that either. You could use a little antiquing wax around the edges to make it look like it's a little more aged if you wanted to. You could use a furniture marker and trace it off, those little Dollar Tree furniture repair markers whichever look you're going for. And you can see I've got some of the brown showing through and I really like that. Now I'm going to embellish my tag and I'm going to use the ribbon to do that. I chose this gold and green because it happens to match the colors that are in the picture and it's fall and I wanted to incorporate these into my fall decor. 
so these colors will do the trick. Now I'm using a little zigzag here with my hot glue so that you don't see a straight line underneath that satin ribbon because otherwise you would see it through the satin ribbon. But you can see it's just a little zigzag under there and I'm going very light with it and I'm going to do the same thing here to lay that green ribbon down and I'm going to overlap it onto the gold just a little bit so that there's no gaps in the seams. I'm going to flip it over, add some hot glue here, and then just flip those right down with the, I want to say curve, but it's not. So we're going to call that the angle of the top of the tag. How about that? I'm just going to go right down here and press it into place. I want to use my little beautiful lacy trim piece here right in the middle. Same little technique. We're going to flip it over and then glue it down on the back. And then I'll use my scissors here to just trim off the excess. This will keep it nice and neat on the back. So if you wanted to trim it out, you could trim your tag out there on the bottom, but I like the way this looks. So no trim on the bottom for me. I'm gonna use a hanger that came off of another project, press it through that hole, grab the knot, and pull it through. I love this little piece. You could hang this off of a pegboard, you could hang this off of your doorknob, you could hang it off of a wreath, however you would want to use this. You got a lot of versatility here. And I hope you'll try this. You can definitely get the tags at Dollar Tree. I'm part of Bloom with Grace, and I'd like to thank Brenda from Miners Market for having me as a co-host. There are going to be links below, and I want you to go and check out the other people, crafty people who have joined in this collaboration. The next is going to be a fall wreath. This is an 18 inch wreath. It's a little bit on the oval side, not completely round, but that's how it is with grapevine wreaths and stick wreaths. I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree embellishments as well as magnolias and the greenery that I got from the thrift store. Beautiful. These seed pods came from the thrift store as well. Pine cones, I have a variety of colors here because I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet. These beautiful thrifted pieces. And I'm gonna start by fluffing out my greenery. Now these pieces have already been cleaned and wiped down, so I'm just gonna fluff them out. I'm gonna fix everything where it looks natural, as it would be on a branch. I'm gonna do the same thing with my floral picks. And if you have any dustiness on your leaves, like I'm showing you here, you can use a big brush. This is just a big paintbrush. Clean, of course, and dry and you can just dust these off. Get in between all your little petals and layers and down the stick and onto the greenery. And you can just very easily do this. Now she's beautiful. I'm gonna take my greenery picks and just pick those off, cut them off. And then I'm gonna use a glue stick. If you decide you want to put it outside, you need to use glue. But for me, it's going to be inside and I am not gonna be needing glue. Your picks will go down and stick quite nicely in this type of a wreath. So I'm just gonna start, I know that I don't want this to be uh, symmetrical and I want it to be thicker on the left side than on the right side. So everything's gonna be toward the bottom right. I'm gonna add in my next pick of Magnolia Greenery and I'm just gonna press that in there I'm gonna work kind of toward the center at this point. Now this was thrifted and I didn't have enough stem on here. So all you have to do is take a stem off of something else or a skewer or something like that. Take some floral wire and just tightly wind that around. Once you get it as secure as you need it, you can trim it off. Tuck your wires down because you don't wanna be poking your fingers. You do, you don't want to do that. We don't want injuries while we're crafting, do we? We don't want anything to slow us down when we're in the flow. So I'm just going to take that now. It's going to work nicely, and I'm going to place it down. 
Perfect. So now the flowers can go in. I'm going to go to the top and I'm just going to add my beautiful magnolia on this side. And I'm going to continue around and let you see how I do that. I don't want everything lined up on the top of the wreath. I want some things to be on the, kind of facing a little bit toward the outside and the bottom. And then we'll build slightly upward when we put in the next elements. So you can move your greenery around. You can pull some of those darker leaves through if you want. You can press some in the back. You know, it's on wire. These. Uh, a good quality florals. They'll be on wire so you can easily move these pieces apart. Then I had some that were just, they weren't on a bigger pick, they were just singular leaves. I'm just going to add those here and there. And continue along with my flowers. I love magnolias. We have three magnolia trees on our property and they are just beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the seed pods and you can see that I've bent it so that it will face outward and not straight up. I'm gonna cut it off to a manageable length and then go ahead and add those in. So I'm gonna add one right at the top. I'm gonna add one at the bottom sort of toward the center. And at this point when I'm doing a wreath or a project, I kind of, I go by feeling. I uh, don't really think about what I'm doing. There's really no rhyme or reason. I just keep adding in. It's like I kind of get in the zone. If you're a crafter, I, you probably know what I mean here. I just go with what feels right. If I put something down and I don't like it, I just move it. It's not glued in, so it, you know that makes it convenient at this point. I'm just continuing along here and there. Now I'm going to take those little picks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to put them in twos. Some will be single and some will be in twos, and I'm just going to add those here or there. This is the part of the wreath that you could consider your flyaway. It's a little something to give it extra movement and interest. They're small. I love the colors. I love the colors in this wreath. This could, if you didn't have the picks in there, it could probably be like a summer wreath. But the fact that we have those beautiful leathery looking brown leaves and all the brown from the seed pods, I think this is perfect for fall decor. Then you can just add in some of the little picks of um, pine cones or whatever you have that you like here and there. And I don't want to add a lot here, just a little bit for interest. And I think this turned out beautifully for fall. What do you think? I know magnolias bloom earlier in the year and at this point they've pretty much gone to, um, to the seed pods now, but to put those in there like this, I think they look really nice. The next project and the final project is going to be a fall sign. I've got this beautiful fabric. It does not have magnolias on it, but the flowers are similar enough, I think. And this grateful, thankful, blessed sign, those came from the thrift store. I have some paint, this is spray paint, and then my antiquing wax. I'm gonna use a couple of different brushes. I just recently picked this up at the thrift store. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? It's like a little magnolia swag. And then I have this picture that used to be in my daughter's room and she has outgrown it. So I'm going to use my heat gun here, heat up those seams because they're glued and nailed down. Then I'm going to use my knife to cut the seam. Then I'm going to just take this tool here, and this is like a, I don't know, a spatula of some sort. And then I'm going to pull the back off carefully and then remove the little nails that are down in here. Clean up my edges, remove all that paper and bulky glue. 
I'm gonna put my fabric down the pretty side down on the mat. I'm gonna lay the backing down and use it as a guide so that I can cut the fabric off. And this is my rotary knife, or my rotary blade, excuse me. And then I'm gonna use my Mod Podge to put it down. I'm going to add quite a bit here because I want that fabric to stay in place. And then using my brush, I'm gonna be sure to go around all the edges all of the corners all across the middle and a nice even coat so i want to take the opportunity to say welcome to any of you who are not familiar with my channel and have not been here before if you've come over from from brenda's channel or from anybody in the playlist you are very welcome here i'm glad that you stopped by i am always striving to bring you unique budget-friendly diys I use thrift and Dollar Tree supplies to make it economical for all of us. All right, so if we press it in place, I'm now gonna use my little Mod Podge roller and I'm gonna go all over it. Now this is gonna make that glue stick to the fabric and it's almost gonna appear as though it is painted down or if it was made as one piece. You can see how nice and smooth that is. Next, we're going to take this and spray paint it. I'm gonna use one coat outside and then while that's drying, I'm gonna take this antiquing wax. I'm going to add a little water. This is my little water spray bottle here. I'm gonna mix it up and we're gonna make essentially a stain that will match the sign. Because it's kind of a gray wood now, I want to bring it to a richer color. So I'm just gonna take a nice soft paintbrush here and start adding this down. It's nice and watery and it moves really nicely across this wood. It, this was not a sealed wood, so this is gonna go nicely in here. We're gonna go around the outside, the inside, and all of the edges, except where we're going to be gluing the backing back down. You don't wanna put any antiquing wax there because it could interfere with the um, ability of your glue to stick, and we don't want the back popping off, right? So since this is a standing picture, we don't want this in the way. I'm just gonna glue it down just to keep that little stand from moving around. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna take that same antiquing wax mixture here that we made, the stain, with a very soft round brush, and I am just gonna go all over this piece. My idea for this was to take it from that brass, gold, whatever color that was, that was on there, which actually was really pretty in itself but I want this to look more like a wood piece. And uh, you'll, you'll see why in a moment. You'll, you'll understand in a moment. So keep going along here. You're gonna go in all the cracks. You're gonna go in every little detailed piece of those leaves. There are some seed pods there. There are some, um, all the petals of the magnolia, the center of the magnolia. Be sure that you thoroughly cover this in the wax y'all we have reached 16,000 subscribers y'all are amazing for y'all who have been here and who have been following thank you so much you do amazing things with this channel you really do being here and watching and following means so much to me all right now we're going to take the backing once this is dry we're going to lay it down and it is just going to pop back into place so just press it down and it will lock into place but we're going to be doing some things to the inside of this box so we need to be sure that it doesn't move around and that nothing pops out so we're going to go ahead and add some glue just to the corners because at some point in the future i'm i may want to use this again and I can recover this with something else. Just pop the back out and just do something else to it. So this will ensure that that happens. I'm going to center my little sign right in the middle. Isn't that gorgeous, y'all? I think that's so pretty. And although those flowers are not magnolias, I think they're gonna work great in this project. So I'm just trying to get an idea of where my center would be. Then I'm gonna add my hot glue and this is Gorilla Glue because this is gonna be, you know, it's kind of bulky, so it's gonna be kind of heavy. I don't want it to fall. 
and then I'm going to add it where it looks like it's centered, press it down nicely, and then look, this is going to be like an embellishment on the top so that it looks like it's made onto the box. I love this. I love this so much. Once I get it in the center, you can check with your ruler just to make sure. I'm going to press it down in place and hold it there to give that chance that a chance for the uh, Gorilla Glue to grip. Now you're going to use something like E6000 if you don't use Gorilla Glue. Look how gorgeous. So there are a couple of spots I missed. I'm just going to go back in with a fine brush and get in the little cracks. And you can see here the details. You can see what I was talking about here. I want to get in there. Now if you do a little too much, like I got a little too much there on that leaf, just grab a terry cloth of whatever type, old wash rag, old sock or something that you have and just pat it and it will just go, it'll stay down in the cracks and the top will come off. So it makes it perfect. I'm just reinforcing my shadows and stuff in there and y'all doesn't this look gorgeous? I love this. So what do you think about magnolias in the fall? I think this looked really nice. I mean we use other flowers and when they're not in season, right? So why not magnolias too? Beautiful. Here are the projects. I have three of them. The tag, the sign, and the wreath. Do you have a favorite of these three? Do you think you might try any of these? I would love so much if you enjoyed this video, if you share it with somebody on your social media or your friends and family. I believe in you and I know that you can do these projects. I know you can. So you don't have a perfect thrift, thrift store. You know, you don't have a place where you can get thrifted things. Take something you already have at home and take it apart and give it a new life. I do it all the time. I would love a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I would love for you to subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. I do two videos a week on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time and I would love, love, love to see you in my comment section. We have a lot of fun talking and chatting and getting to know each other. I have a giveaway coming up for my 16,000 subscribers so I would love for you to be a part of that. Check out the links in the description box below for Brenda at Miner's Markets channel and for everybody else that's on the playlist that will also be linked. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.